All right, in this lesson, we're going to talk about geometric sequences. So a geometric sequence is sort of like the arithmetic sequences I've done in a previous video. An arithmetic sequence is a sequence that increases or decreases by the same amount every time. So it's got a common difference. A geometric sequence doesn't really work like that, but it's very similar. So let me erase out the arithmetic sequence. In this case, if I tried to find a common difference, it wouldn't work. Because uh, 10 minus 5 gives me 5, 20 minus 10 gives me 10, 40 minus 20 gives me 20. See, it doesn't give me a common difference. But if I look and think about a different operation, and the arithmetic sequences, I'm adding numbers, what if I multiply? Well, 5 times 2 gives me 10, and 10 times 2 gives me 20, and 20 times 2 gives me 40. So the common ratio, because in geometric sequences they're called common ratio, we're going to say that's a little r. Um, the common ratio here is 2. And how do we come up with it? Well, we know that 5 times 2 is 10, but maybe it's a bigger set of numbers that's more complicated. Well, I can, if I'm multiplying to go forward, to go backwards, I need to divide. So 10 divided by 5 gives me 2, 20 divided by 10 gives me 2, and 40 divided by 20 gives me 2. These parts or where the ratio idea comes in, and then you simplify it down to just 2 over 1, or whatever it happens to be. So if you multiply by the same ratio for each one, it's a geometric sequence. Now, let's write a recursive and an explicit definition. In order to do that, I need to remind you that the first term, generically, when we talk about these types of sequences, we're just going to call A. The recursive definition, much like with arithmetic sequences, much easier to do than the explicit definition. The recursive definition is based off the term in front of it. So I'm going to say that my recursive definition is A sub n. And all I'm going to do is take my common difference. And I need to multiply the common difference by the term in front. So if I want to know what a sub n is, I need to take the a sub n minus 1, which would be the term in front of it, and multiply it by the ratio. So if I was looking at 40, and I'm going to put the n values up here just so you can see what the heck I'm talking about. If I was to do, say, 40, that would be the fourth term. a sub n minus 1 would be 20 times the common difference. So the recursive definition for this one is pretty simple. The explicit definition, not much more complicated. Of course, any good explicit definition starts out with something, so we're going to start out with the 5, uh, in this case, or the a value. Now we need to know how many times we need to do the common ratio. And say I wanted to go from the fifth term over to the fourth term. So I need to go from 5 to 40. Well, 5 times 8 is equal to 40. I know that to be true, and I can use that information to help me. Because my common uh, ratio here is 2, I'm going to make that a power, or I'm going to make it the a base of my exponential relationship, and I know that 2 to the third power is 8. So I can say 5 times 2 to the third power is 40. This is the part that makes it complicated because, of course, I need to figure out how to get a 3 from the term that I'm looking for. Well, the term I'm looking for is the fourth term, so 4 minus 1 gives you 3. So my explicit definition is the original number, so in the 5, times my common difference, and I'm going to raise it to the power of the term minus 1, so n minus so if I wanted the 63rd term, whatever it happened to be, so a sub 63 in the problem above would be 5 times r to the 62nd power. Because that means I'd be multiplying by the common ratio 62 times, and I'd be multiplying it by the original term. should give me the number that I'm looking for. So that's the basics. Let's talk about the types of questions that they'll give you. I don't know where I have stuff written there. Um, so is it an arithmetic sequence or not? Or a geometric sequence, I'm sorry. So in the first one, we're going to look for a common ratio. So I'm going to do 12 divided by 4. I'm going to do 16 divided by 12. And then I'm going to do 20 divided by 16. Well, 12 divided by 4 is, of course, 3. Uh, 16 divided by 12 gives me uh, 1 and a third. And then 20 divided by 16 would be 1 and a fourth, something like that. Not looking good. So I can say no, 
it's not a uh, geometric sequence. In fact, if you look at it a little bit more closely, it actually is an arithmetic sequence, but you know, it is what it is because it has a common difference because it goes about four every time. In the next one, we're going to look for a ratio. Check. Yes. Common ratio is there. It's four. Uh, in terms of the exponents, um, you, all you look for, uh, if you have the same base, of course, um, is to look at the uh, how the exponents change. Now remember, a change in an exponent is actually a, multipl a multiplicative one, so you, all you have to look for is they're going up or down by the same. It's almost like if you have exponents in the same base, you're doing a common difference for the exponents to see if it's geometric or not. So um, 4 to the third, it's 3 up, or I should say it's 4 to the third up, and then it would be 4 to the third up, and then 4 to the third up. And since you have to multiply to get there, yes, geometric is the same. You can actually go in and test, like 4 to the 6th power divided by 4 to the third power gives you 64. And if I did 4 to the ninth power, and I divided by 4 to the 6th power, also 64. So yes, it's a geometric sequence. It works out perfectly for me. Uh, in the next set, they may say stuff like, find the next term. I want to know the tenth term for negative 3 to 6 to negative 12, that whole thing. In order to do that, the easiest way to do it is just to use the explicit formula. So the explicit formula is a sub n equals a times r over n minus 1. Now I need to find what my common ratio is. So I do 6 divided by negative 3 and I get negative 2. And once again, I get negative 2. So to find the a sub 10, my initial term is negative 3. I need to multiply it by the common ratio of negative 2. And by the way, when you type it in the calculator, make sure you put the negative 2 in parentheses before you square it or whatever you have to do. Because this and this are not the same thing. Uh, negative 2 raised to the second power without the parentheses around it just means, uh, because of order of operations, this would mean 4 times negative 1. So make sure that you don't make that ridiculous mistake, because that would be annoying. And then make sure you raise it to the n minus 1, and we'll look for the tenth term, so it would be the ninth power. So I'm going to do negative 2 raised to the ninth power. I get negative 512. I'm going to multiply that by negative 3. It's going to give me a positive answer of 1536. Um, anyway, find the missing terms. Now in this case we're going to use the explicit formula again. I'm actually going to change pen colors real quick uh, to make that happen. I'm going to use the a sub n formula. Well I thought I was going to change pen colors. Apparently I'm not. Um, a sub n equals uh, a times r n minus 1. Now, the nice thing here is that I can find how far apart they are or find my common difference just by plugging in information that I already have. Because I have the fourth term, so instead of a sub n, I'm going to say a sub 4. I have a, so I'm going to say a sub 1 times r, and the difference between them would be the fourth term minus the first term. So I do it for minus 1. So I'm going to end up with r to the third power. My a sub 1, of course, is 9. My a to the 4th power is 576. So I'm going to uh, divide both sides by 9. I'm going to pop up over here. 576 divided by 9 is 64. And then I need to take the cube root of 64, which is one of those uh, things that you can do. So I'm going to take the third root. I don't leave a lot of space for this. So my r value here is 4. My common ratio in this situation is 4. So I can take that information and just do 9 times 4, and 9 times 4 is of course 36, and then I do 36 times 4, and it gives me 144, and if I did 144 times 4, it would give me 576. So take the information, plug it into the explicit formula, and it'll get you where you want to be. From here, 
they may say uh, using uh, try to find the fourth and fifth terms but they don't give you any information here this is one of those really weird ones like they don't have to trick you enough they add a whole other level to it because you don't really know what the common difference is so you have to use the uh, definition itself to get from one place to the next so what I'm going to do is use the uh, explicit definition a sub n is equal to a times r n minus 1 I know what like I can use a sub 3 here a sub 1 times r 3 minus 1 so my a sub 3 term is 8 my a sub n my a sub 1 term is 50 times r squared so I need to divide both sides by 50 and I get r squared is equal to four over twenty five and if I take the square root of those two numbers I end up with the final answer of r equals two fifths so essentially it's de it's contracting down to two-fifths its original size each time whatever it happens to be so all I'm going to do is apply this common ratio that I just figured out to eight to find my fourth and fifth terms by the way, if I wanted to find out what the second term is, I would just do 50 times uh, 2 fifths, find out that it's 20, and then 20 times 2 fifths is, of course, 8. So now I do 8 times 2 fifths, and get 3 and 1 fifth. and then uh, from here I multiply that times two-fifths and I get one and seven twenty-fifths or if you wanted to use decimals it's three point two and uh, one point two eight but that's kinda how it goes that's how you can use a geometric sequence to find stuff even when you don't know enough information or use the explicit formula for anyway uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is the geometric mean. Now, the geometric mean is this weird thing uh, that has nothing to do with the mean that you've probably done for most of your life. If we have a geometric sequence, we can find out what the middle term is. But I wanted to show you uh, sort of how they go from one place to the other and how they come up with it. The idea for the geometric mean is that if I squared the middle term, if I have a geometric sequence, and this is a geometric sequence, I'm doing times 3 every time, so my common ratio here is 3, in case you were wondering. Um, but what you found out is if you square this middle number of a geometric sequence, it's the same as doing the 6 times 54. So I do 18 squared, and I get 324, and I do 6 times 54, and I get 324. So that relationship is in play and now that you know that we can move to the next part of it. So what we're going to do is look at mean in a whole other way than we're used to. So I'm going to set it up so instead of saying um, the middle term squared if I need to know what it is so let's say 6 and I'll put a question mark and then a 54 well I know that the question mark squared is the same as 6 times 54. So if I want to know what the term is, I need to take the square root. And of course it'll give you 18. But uh, you should know that the generic form of this would be that the geometric mean is the square root of the first term, so they will call it x, times y. That's why it happens, just kind of for your information situation. Now I'm not 100% sure if I set up a s separate problem on the next one. If not, I'm going to come back to this page, but I wanted to show you that first. Nope. So let's do a problem. We're going to say that the geometric uh, version is the square root of x over y. So if I'm missing a middle term, so say I start out with 8, something and 648. So what I'm going to do is take the two terms together and I'm going to take the square root of the first one times 
the second one. So I'm taking the square root of the product, by the way. Make sure you don't do square root of 8 and hit enter and then do times 648. You need to do 8 times 648 first. And then take the square root of that number, which is, by the way, is um, the square root of 5,184. And you'll end up with uh, 72. And if I do uh, common ratios here, I do get a nice geometric sequence. Now, there's only one other component to it. I can't tell, like it could be negative 72 as well. So I can't automatically jump on the idea that it's positive 72. There's nothing that says it can't be negative 72. So you just have to make a little bit of an adjustment. So your answer here is actually plus minus 72 to cover for that one possibility. And that's really all of the types of questions most likely you'll see with uh, geometric sequences. So uh, I hope that you feel a little bit more prepared with the idea and uh, good luck on any assignments that you have to do.